Folks say, keep on living. Huh? Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You want to cry? chapter to read. Let me read this 58th verse. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God, for your glory, use me. Forgive me of my sins, forgive us of our sins. Create in us, O oh God, clean hearts, renew in us the right spirit, God. Touch with your word, God. I, I, I count it a privilege to be able to stand right now. So God, I ask that you just take me out of myself and fill me with your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians tells us of the victory that we have in Jesus. It's just a reminder to the church at Corinth of the victory that we have in Jesus. And Jesus' death and his resurrection he tells us that in, in, in chapter 15. It tells us about our lives that we want to make it. Um, a change will take place. Yeah, the corruption has Put on incorruption. There has to be a change. And it talks about really how we have the victory. You see, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is of all. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The 15th chapter tells us of the victory that we have in Christ. The 58th verse says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And on this Labor Day weekend, God wanted me to share with you that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Can y'all say that please? Your labor is not in the Lord. Say it again. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. I, I, I remember growing up, little jobs that I had, shoveling the snow, or doing something for somebody, and after completing the work, I got paid. I got paid right away. Grass, wherever they did, clean it up, sweep it up, shovel the snow. I got paid right away. I remember even when, when I was in college and had a job at the National Shirt Shop that I got paid at the end of the week right away. I got paid in cash. And so I could always look for every Friday to have someone coming in. But when I got a real job. I didn't get paid every Friday. As a matter of fact, I had to work two weeks before I would get paid on that third week. I wasn't used to that. I was used to getting a check or cash as soon as the work was done. 
I eventually got paid, but I had to learn some things about getting paid. And then living in Virginia, it was a married man now and trying to put monies together. And then Sylvie's working at Virginia Union University. And lo and behold, they got paid once a month. Now, y'all didn't hear that. That doesn't make sense. Got paid once a month. Now, we didn't have any money to start with. <laughs> and when we did have money, we had to budget it for the whole month. Learning experiences. But the good news is that we did get paid. And our labor was not in vain. Spiritually, my brothers and sisters, so many of us want to get paid right away. We pray to God, we want God to answer our prayer right away. We pray to God and ask God to bless us, and we want the answer to our prayer before the week is out. When we really pray God like that, God, yeah, give me patience, but hurry up. We treat God like that. We, we, we treat God like we put food in the microwave. It's not done. We push a couple of buttons and 30 seconds, it's done. It's hot. That's how we treat God. And we want God to treat us that way. I'm here to tell you that payday doesn't work like that. But I need to let you know that payday does come. God may not come when you want him. Do we have a witness here? That he's always, come on, talk back to me. He's always on time. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I'm speaking to believers now. If you're not a believer, what I'm going to say, you won't comprehend. But I'm speaking to those who say, I love the Lord. You he heard my cry. He's the head of my life. I'm speaking to those folk who are not playing games with their religion, not playing games with their faith. I'm talking to you. If, if, if you are a person who is saying, I believe God's going to help you with this message. But if you're not serious about uh, doing and understanding how God does things, such as uh, God's ways are not our ways. Have you read that? God's thoughts are not our thoughts. I'm talking to believers now. now if you don't, if you haven't spent time in God's word, you may not have heard that before. But let me tell you that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. So let me help believers along the journey. And, and for those who want to believe, listen to what the word of God has to say to us. My brother, my believers, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I didn't say church work. I said the work of the Lord, the work of the church. Abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So just stay with me. And I'm through because we have a full day, it's been a full day. Be steadfast in your faith. Don't be playing games with your faith. Be steadfast, be loyal, be faithful, be committed, be devoted, be dedicated, be dependable, be reliable, be steady, be true, be constant in your faith. Uh, you you got to believe that God's word is true. You got to believe that God will answer your prayer. You got to believe that God will come through for you. One of the things we discussed this morning in a mid Sunday school class is talking about faith and doubt and how folk talk about doubt comes in a way. I'm trying to help you by understanding what God's word says to the believer. To the believer, God says, you got to be steadfast. To the believer, you got to be steadfast in your walk. You got to be loyal in your walk. You got to be dedicated in your walk. You got to understand. You got to be dependable. You got to be reliable in your walk. Giving 
up. I came to Chicago. I wanted to pass the full time. When I came to Chicago, the cost of living was so high. Double digit inflation. The cost of living was so high. When I lived in Virginia, I had a four bedroom house, lot 90 feet wide by 215 feet deep, paying a little more than $200 a month. Come to Chicago, it was entirely different. But I came here with the understanding that I passed the Bethlehem Baptist Church full time. That's what I wanted to do full time. I was pastor, I was bi vocational in Richmond, Virginia. I wanted to pastor full time. And I believed God for it. I believed God for it. Came to Chicago, started working here, doing ministry here. But lo and behold, I found out that I had to get another job, a second job to supplement the income, to supplement, to help pay bills with my children who were growing up to get their hair done, nails done, buy clothes, with all those things. But I and what I believe. Oh, y'all gonna pray with me here? I need you to pray with me. It, 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 was, it was a time where I wanted to do full time, just be able to say I passed the Bethany Church, but my situation was if I went to a conference, I had to be let up, you know, I, I worked at Prairie State College and, and I passed the Bethany Baptist Church. I go somewhere with Moraine Bell, I worked at Moraine Bell, but yet also I passed the Bethany Baptist Church. God to switch that around that the first thing out of my mouth would be that I'm the pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church. And I stand here to tell you that though I went through a period of having to work in a bivocational manner, God heard my prayers and if you ask me now what is it that I do, I can stand with God in Christ to say that I am the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church. God Manipulation. 
If your work is not going to be in vain, you got to be steadfast. But then it says something else. You got to be unmovable. By the translation, they say immovable. But you got to be unmovable. There ought to be something about your walk with God that makes you unmovable. Because Satan is going to try you every day. Huh? You'll get tempted every day. But you got to look at how God was able to combat Satan on every hand. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You got to be unmovable in your faith. If you want God to bless you, you got to be strong in your faith. You cannot be affected by what others may say. Your faith must be untouched, unstirred. You can't be uh, uh, impressed by others. You just are impressed by God. God is trying to say to us, we got to be unmovable, steadfast, unmovable. We got to be unshaken in our faith. I'm trying to help us understand what a movable means. I just look at my own history. I look at my folk. Person named Clarence White wrote a song in 1927. In 1962, Lake Ralph Abernathy took the words of the song and was just modified just a little bit and became a song of freedom. Joan Baez in 19, 1960s recorded it and people just took hold of it. But this is our song. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Come on, y'all. Ain't gonna let nobody Turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't gonna let no man she turn me round, turn me round. Turn me round, ain't gonna let no man she Turn me round, I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Oh, ain't gonna let no jailhouse turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let no jailhouse turn.
water hoses. Here we are with a very unique president who's seen some stuff that will take the weak-minded person and cause them to lose sight of what God has done for them. But I told you I'm talking to believers. Believers got to say, ain't no Trump gonna turn me around. Ain't no Congress gonna turn me around. Ain't no prejudice or hatred gonna turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking. I'm gonna keep on talking because I'm marching the freedom man. And I know because of what God has done for me, I gotta keep on. I gotta keep on. I can't be fooled by this craziness that's going on around here. Are you with me here? I'm trying to help believers. If you don't want to believe, this message is not for you. But if you want to believe, this will help you on your journey. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, doing your best, excelling in the work of the Lord. What's the work of the Lord? Love one another as I have loved you. So love one another. I think that will work. It really will work. So listen, I, I didn't get a message today. And so I just want to tell this to you today. And I'm through. Because I can, I can run up and down the aisle. And you all can think I'm preaching. I'm preaching right now. Huh? I'm just trying to make you know that you're made with God and made with the Lord. So what are you saying? Well, when I look at Jesus and how Jesus was able to go through what he went through, even hmm, God paid his son. Yeah, yeah, on resurrection morning. Yeah, Jesus died on the third day morning. God raised Jesus from the dead and let it be known that all power is in his hand. And for us who believe, the same God that raised Jesus from the dead has left his spirit to be with us so we can keep on walking and talking, that we can be steadfast in our dealings, so we can be unmovable in our circumstances and recognize that payday is going to come. That payday is, as a matter of fact, is every day. It's morning by morning that new verses that we receive. I get paid every day. I don't know about you, but I thank God every day for blessing me every day. I don't know how you feel. I'm going to have to wait. I found out I'm going to have to wait until the end of the week to get paid. I found out that the Lord is blessing me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. I, I can pay right now. So I say this to you as I take my seat. The service of Jesus, true pleasure affords. In Him there is joy without an alloy. That means without mixture. Tis heaven to trust Him and rest on His words. It pays to serve Jesus each day. It, it, it pays to serve Jesus whatever may be tied. It pays to be true whatever you may do. Tis riches of mercy in Him to abide. It pays to serve Jesus each day. Though sometimes, listen, sometimes the shadows may hang over the way. And sorrows may come to beckon us home. Our precious redeemer, each toil will repay. It pays to serve Jesus each day. I would imagine that the writer Frank Huston got happy when he wrote this part. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. The path
want you to listen and then I want to extend the invitation because if you are here today don't be fooling with this this is real today so dig above just bless us
this is because I can't play church. Lives are at stake. Lives are at stake. This is not a social media experience where you just push a button. This is life experience where sometimes it's going to get rough on the journey. Sometimes you may have to shed tears on the journey. Sometimes you may lose loved ones on the journey. Sometimes you may lose a job on the journey. But I stand to tell you that the God that I serve will take care of his children. I wish I had just one person that knows that God will take care of him. That God will provide. That God will keep you. That God will hold you. That God will sustain you. I wish I had somebody here not ashamed to say, I know that God is able. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays. Parents, tell your children, it pays to serve Jesus. Tell your grandchildren, it pays to serve Jesus. Concerned with your life. I'm concerned with your life. Come on, join me around the altar as we pray together. Don't be playing with your faith. Don't be playing with this.
for their lives, God. That they may be better today because they've spent time with you. So God, please hear our prayer. We have sickness in our congregation. Please hear our prayer. We have folk who are going through some stuff, God. We just ask that you have mercy. There's some who are wondering how they're going to make it. God is breathing to their spirit. But in the name of Jesus, God, I'm asking that faith would just override whatever doubt is in their mind. God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you bless the ministry of this church, God, in the name of Jesus. You have been good to us, and we're just asking for your divine presence. Oh, God, hear our prayer. Oh, God, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Bless God. Let you hold hands with one another. Bless God as we pray for one another. Bless God as others are praying for us. Bless God our military. Bless God uh, those who are fighting immigration concerns. Bless God those in Florida and Bahamas. Oh God, bless in the name of Jesus. Our city, God, bless our young people who don't value life. God, bless and keep our schools, God. In the name of Jesus, we're calling Then when it's all over, uh, you prepare a place for us. Now we take that you were. Hear this prayer that we offer to you, to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Shake one another's hand, give them a love or something.